If you are considering it, I would say make a plan with your partner. Make sure you guys are on the same page because you do not want to be making decisions in the middle of the night when you are tired. You know what's going to make them go back to sleep. You know that nursing them is just going to make them go right back to sleep. So make sure that you guys are on the exact same page with what is going to happen. Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I talk about motherhood. I talk about pregnancy. We do things kind of natural, kind of eco-friendly, kind of granola. If you're into that, please subscribe. If you're not new here, please like the video. Like what is hypnobirthing? We do elimination communication, tons of breastfeeding information over on my podcast, Hey Shayla. I also run Instagram, Hey Shayla. I look like I just got out of a hike or something, but it was a little chilly this morning, so I threw on a baseball cap because I haven't showered and I'm wearing my sweater, so not hiking just doing this. Let's get started. Today, we are going to talk about night weaning. I'm gonna set the scene a little bit here. This is my second daughter. We co-sleep and we have a floor bed that we do naps in during the day and we exclusively breastfeed. So I feel like that's kind of some good information. I have a whole video talking about what I did with my first. I feel like there's a little bit more details on like the how-to in that one. I'll do a little bit of that in this one, but I remember looking up other videos of like, who is a co-sleeping mom trying to night wean their kid? Because I need to know how how to do it because I am very lost and confused and I was doing it the first time to get my period back because I was 13 months postpartum and still have not had not had it and we wanted to try for more children. I was told by Natalie who's like an IBCLC who's been on my podcast the peak time of like milk production is between like 11 and 6 a.m. so if you cannot nurse during that time it's possible that you could get your period back. We just basically nurse to sleep so during nap time occasionally during the day but I had mostly cut out a lot of the daytime nursing and I was going like five six hour stretches without nursing and I still hadn't gotten it back so I was like okay let's try the night waiting and literally four weeks later to the day I got my period back so we'll see how it works this time if you are considering night weaning I have a few very important tips for you thing number one do not do it until you're ready because thing number two is the most important thing is consistency you have to be consistent if you're lying with your baby and they're crying straight for 20 minutes and then you give in your baby goes okay eventually I'll get it eventually if I cry long enough, I will get it. So with my first night one, she cried for 45 minutes before she fell asleep. This baby, an hour. I'm not like leaving them alone in their bed. In my mind, I'm thinking we're not going to night nurse anymore. How can we comfort each other? How can I comfort you in a different way? Let's learn a different way. And so I'm constantly there like holding her, rocking her, jostling, I guess, as I'm like humming what I always hum her, which is twinkle, twinkle, little star, or just going shh, 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 shh or get up and like rocking her, but mostly I laid down because we're both very tired. So it's just like, how can I comfort you in a new way? And sometimes I need to stop all of that. Like she's just like overstimulated and she's pissed and she's just like, stop touching me. So I just have to like be silent for a little bit, let her roll around. And then when she comes back to me, I kind of like do it again, just to like calm her down and settle her down. It's exhausting. And you like, we did it last time when Seth had time off so that I could sleep during the day when it, I woke up. It's hard and you don't want you don't want your baby to cry. So you have to like know that you're ready. You have to know why you're doing it. For me, I, I very clearly wanted to get my period, so I was like, this is what we're going to do. I also thought, if we night wean, she'll sleep better. That wasn't the case for my first. She still had wake-ups, like she normally did, but she would just go to sleep without nursing. She would just go to sleep snuggling us or whatever. So if your main thing is like, I want them to sleep longer, this might do it, this might not. I also found it really helpful with my first and with this one, during the day sometimes we don't nurse. So like when they try to pull up my shirt and they want to nurse, I'd be like, no, let's go do something else. I watch Carrie Lochner. She's got a whole Instagram stories like talking about weaning and it was so helpful. And the most important thing that I got from her is like your kids want to nurse for nutrition. It's also just like a really good way for them to connect with you. So if you're trying to wean and they want to nurse, don't be annoyed. Don't be like rejection. Be like, oh, we're not going to do that right now, but let's snuggle. Let's snuggle together. Like let's watch a show together. Let's go eat something together. Let's be together, but we're not going to nurse. And that has helped with my kids a lot. I'm not just being like, nope, nope, nope we're not doing that. Nope, nope, nope. Connecting with them in a different way is really, really important. In doing that, I say no to nursing during the day. And I felt like that was helpful because in the night they were like, oh, she's saying no. I'm not completely unfamiliar with this. If you're constantly just like, yeah, whatever you want, you can have it. And then all of a sudden at night you're like, nope, it can be confusing. There's a lot of things that can be confusing, but if you're just consistent with what you do, it's not confusing. Sit down with your partner, be very clearly on the same page. So there's kind of two thoughts. You can do do it or your husband can do it because it's some people are like well I want my husband to do it because he doesn't have boobs and it's like easier for him to because he can't he can't nurse so there's that for me I 
nurse her to sleep since she's been born. She's only been nursed to sleep, except for a couple of times. I feel like when I nurse her, she has me, she has my boob. If I'm gonna take my boob away, at least she still has me. That made sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you and you're like, no, it makes sense for them to have my partner. Maybe they already put them to sleep 50% 50 of the time, so that's a comfortable thing. Great, do that. I've heard really good success with partners. And when we eventually completely weaned Aaliyah, that was part of our strategy. Seth would put Aaliyah down for a nap and it was like kind of breaking the whole weaning thing. So for us, we still nurse to sleep for naps and we still nurse to sleep at bedtime. But after she goes to bed that first time, we don't nurse anymore until the morning. You just have to be on the same page. Like who's gonna go in? Who's gonna be responsible for this? Are you gonna help at a certain point? Like after 45 minutes, are you gonna switch? Or are you just like on it for tonight? I'll be on it next night. Or like, are you doing it for the full week or whatever and in my mind I thought this is gonna take a week and it really didn't it only took a couple of days in both cases our thing was I just told them we'll nurse in the morning no we're not gonna nurse now we'll nurse in the morning and then when it was bright enough in the room it was a very clear indication that like something was different and we could nurse now so we were like okay we're gonna do it about the same time as Aaliyah around 13 months because I feel like they're old enough to kind of understand it a little bit more at 13 months so I was like we're gonna wait till then but then one night she was biting me going to sleep and I was like we cannot be biting I was angry and I just put my shirt down I was like no we're not doing that and she sat and she cried and she wasn't like losing her mind but she was just like what why why and then 15 minutes later she fell asleep and I'm laying with Aaliyah's here as he's here as he's crying and upset but Aaliyah's just kind of like as he's crying and I'm like I know let's just like try and go to sleep Aaliyah fell asleep she fell asleep 15 minutes later and I was like oh my god we just went through it because like I said you don't want them to cry for 20 minutes and then be like oh you get it so I was like well if we're gonna do it we might as well just do it now because we already went through a stretch of not nursing to sleep but Seth was gonna work the next two days and I was like oh I was gonna wait till you were off but we're starting we're starting that was night one so for clothing I like to wear a high neck sports bra so that they can't like just pull my shirt down or something and then tank top or a t-shirt that can be tucked in so they can't really access anything if they wanted to. And then something I also like to share is that I felt with my first and with this one like a stronger connection with them after we night weaned because the only way that I felt like I could comfort them was nursing them. Like when they would snuggle me instead of nurse, I was just like, you love me. You really, really love me. Like it just made me emotional. And last time I remember women who couldn't breastfeed were like, that's so nice to hear. I don't know, cause there's just this huge thing around women who breastfeed who feel this like such intense bond with their children and they breastfeed. I breastfed my first for a year and a half. This is my second, we're exclusively breastfeeding. I do not feel this like deep, connection when we're breastfeeding and it's hormones it's oxytocin that's going on that like makes you feel that i don't know why i don't feel that it's not like this like oh my gosh i'm just like okay i'm feeding my baby you're going to sleep i'm comforting you i love it and then when we wean i'm like oh you're snuggling me i love it even more i feel like i just you just love me so much so there's that and along with all of what I just explained, your hormones during this time, this is a very important thing, can go absolutely insane. I'm still waiting for it because I know that there's a drop because your hormones are changing. They're changing again because now it needs to make a different, less hormone to make the milk. And some people asked about like a drop in milk supply. I don't know. We, we're doing solids. We're still nursing whenever we can. I remember Aaliyah was dry nursing for a while when I was pregnant with Ezzy. And then that's when I was like, we have to stop because this is making my skin crawl, which I feel like is by design. I know tandem nursing is also something that a lot of people do, but I feel like your body's like, I'm making a human. I need to stop feeding this human. I don't know. Day number one, we've been having an extremely late bedtime lately, which is challenging for everyone, but it's because of Leah's daycare they nap until 3 p.m. So that means that bedtime is like at 8.30. And when it's just me at night, I put them to bed at the same time. She went to bed around 9 p.m. Took 15 minutes where she was like fussing and crying. But I'm telling you, as moms, we know the difference between like, she is upset, she is like sad, hurt, she is just kind of fussing. And it wasn't one that like triggered my anxiety. It was just one that was like, okay, I'm gonna comfort you. I'm sorry that you're upset about this. I love you so much. We are going to nurse in the morning. I didn't know I was night weaning at that point, but that's kind of the vibe that I give out. It's like, I, I love you. I love you. I'm here for you. I'm right here. Don't worry, whatever. Right now, before we start night weaning, I said she should probably wake up like two or three times a night just to nurse, literally latch, fall back asleep. When we go to sleep, she wakes up every 45 minutes, but then once I go to bed, she only wakes up like a couple times. She woke up at 10.30. I went to her, laid down with her, fell right asleep. Five minutes of fussing maybe. Then 11.45, like an hour later, same thing. Just kind of fussy, 
lay down, fell asleep, not a problem. Then she woke up at 1.15 and she was up for an hour. And it wasn't an hour of straight crying. Like I literally imagined the first time like my child was just gonna be like just losing her mind and that could happen. It's been different with my two, so I'm not saying that that's not possible, but she would just like sit there and throw her head back and be like, ah, like this, I just want a nurse. And then I'd try and hand her a sippy cup and she would go like this like push it away. She was so tired that she'd lay down and she'd kind of fall asleep and then she'd like wake up again and be like, ah, I want a nurse. And she did that just cyclical for an hour. And finally she fell asleep again. But like 2.15 and she woke up at three. We got her back to sleep after like five minutes. And then again at 5.30 and then I was like, close enough to six for me, we're nursing. So 5.30, it was light in the room, we nursed. And then she didn't wake up till 8.30 and it's because she was awake for an hour during the night. So I was like, I'm gonna take that as a huge win. Like that was a great night. We had one one hour stretch where she she was not happy, but every other time she woke up kind of unhappy and went right back to sleep. So I was like, that's a win. Night number two was an anomaly. I like don't even want to talk about it because it just doesn't make any sense. She went to bed at nine again and I stuffed her with food. She was eating so much food. She's so picky. When I put stuff on her plate, she either like won't touch it or she'll just inhale it and then inhale it again and I just keep loading up her plate and she just keeps eating it. It was coconut rice, which is just coconut milk, a little bit of water and rice. So there's like a lot of fat in it. A lot of avocado with nutritional yeast and like chia seeds, blueberries, and blackberries. So I think that's why she slept so well. But she woke up at 10.30, which is an hour and a half after she woke up, went to sleep, absolutely no problem. She just like laid back down and went to sleep, no nursing. Then didn't wake up till 5.30. Sorry, what? That's unheard of. We nursed at 5.30 and then she stayed sleeping until 7.15. What, 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 what? How do we do that again? So the next night, night three, I tried to do it again. I tried to stuff her full of food. This time we went to bed early. So we were, she was sleeping by 8 p.m. I went outside because I had to clean. When we bought this house, there was a, a freezer fridge in the garage. It was unplugged and full of mold. And like, I finally got someone to come pick it up, like the recycle people, but I had to clean out all the mold. So I had to go outside, clean out all the mold. While I'm doing that, she woke up, Seth went in there. She was losing her mind screaming, where's my mom? After like 15 minutes of her crying, I came back inside. I obviously had to shower because I was just messing with mold. And then I went in there, I grabbed her. She laid on my shoulder. She did not even like scrunch down to try and nurse, nothing. She laid on my shoulder. I kind of rocked her as I was standing there. She fell asleep. This has never happened. Like she's never fallen asleep on my shoulder ever. I was like, okay, we're gonna transfer to the bed. So we laid down on the bed. She literally nuzzled up under my arm and fell asleep. So she went to bed at eight, at 8.45 she woke up. Then she woke up again an hour later at 9.50, five minutes crying. 11 p.m., five minutes crying. 4 a.m., she's like, okay, feed me. Come on, let's go. And I was like, it's not time yet. I'll feed you in the morning. So she took a little bit longer, but I mean like seven minutes. Then she fell asleep. Then she woke up at 5.15 and I was like, close enough. I fed her at 5.15 and then she slept till 7.30. So night four is very similar. She went to bed at 7.30. She woke up 8.45, 10.45, 12.45, 1.45, 2.45, 3.45. Then at five, I finally nursed her. But like the two o'clock and the four o'clock, they were like, come on, feed me. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know if she's hungry. So with Aaliyah, we would give her a squeezer at like the 4 a.m. wake up just to like hold her over until it was time to get up basically. But then the dentist was like, well, having a squeezer and then going back to sleep is probably not great for her teeth, like all the sugar. I mean, it was pretty easy. We we're just like, oh man, we don't have any squeezers anymore. Here's your water. And so it took a little bit, but we probably gave her a squeezer for like six months during that morning time. And I buy like the little reusable squeezers. So I would just like fill it up, put it next to my bed at night and then give it to her in the morning. I might start doing that with her for this time until she will take water just to like hold her over in the morning. Cause I don't want her to be hungry. That's how the the first four nights have gone be incredibly consistent because they need to know what to expect so if they're like sometimes I cry and I get it sometimes I cry and I don't the other night I cried for a really long time and I didn't get it but now I'm getting it now it's like so confusing so if it's a very clear we're gonna nurse you to sleep you're not gonna get it for the rest of the night when it's light outside or like get a hatch that the light turns green and they get to nurse or some sort of like very clear indication of when they're going to get it and know it yourself so that you can be consistent with them. And then practice saying no during the day a couple of times. I just feel like the anxiety of night weaning is so much worse than actually doing it. That's why I'm almost glad that we just started abruptly because I remember last time just like, okay, we're gonna do it. 
in a week. Okay, we're gonna do it a week. And I just had so much anxiety leading up to doing it. I love the 13 month time. I think it's a really good time that they understand that they're capable. Just sending you so much love, so much peace. Remember the hormone roller coaster that it will come in handy. I was like, I need therapy, I need ADD medication, I need anti anxiety, antidepressant, I need all the men. Like, we need couples therapy, I'm losing my mind. I, and Seth was like, Are you okay? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not okay, I'm not okay. And so, just know that that hormone swing can happen again. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like it, and I will see you next time. Bye. Hello. So I'm editing, okay, yeah, it's been almost two weeks. We started on a Sunday, today's Friday, so on this Sunday it'll be two weeks since we started. I got about four or five days in, and then my kids got super sick. And I was like, I'm not going to restrict your calories or your comfort at night when you're sick. They've been sick now for like five days. I'm starting to get sick. I wanted to give her the antibodies, all those things. So we are on pause for the weaning. I'm also crashing. Like I was like, I'm waiting for the hormone crash. It's happening. And so I'm hoping now that I don't get my period back because I'm like, let's just wait a little while. Cause I'm honestly, my hormones are going so wacko that I'm like, we were trying to get the period back to potentially try for baby number three. And now I'm like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can have more children. So I'm assuming because my hormones are crashing, I'll probably get my period. It's just been, it's just been a whirlwind. And I honestly, I'm like, maybe it's not hormones. Maybe it's just that literally I'm having such a hard time because they're sick. They want to be playing with me and I'm trying to also get some work done because she didn't go to preschool all week. So it's just kind of been nuts, but anyway, maybe I'll do another update on when we do it again, but I really feel like she's, she's got it. She'll be fine. And then I'm looking forward to a little bit more, uh, equal, um, like Seth going in when she wakes up instead of me. She's also like put herself back to sleep a few times, which is unusual. So lots of things happen. Don't underestimate your baby. Don't expect them to sleep through the night necessarily. Um, it's going to be different if you're co-sleeping or if they're in a crib or there's lots of different factors with this, but I just wanted to share our experience. I am exhausted, <laughs> like I said, with illness and with not getting work done and with my hormones. So best of luck. I hope that I really do hope that this video gives you a little bit of encouragement because it was so much anxiety for me to even just start that it was nice to watch other people be like, I couldn't believe how well it went. Even if it doesn't go well, it's just nice going in thinking this could go really great. So good luck to you. Please comment below with your experience. I would love to hear it. Share like if you're a co-sleeper or if you're a crib, what your game plan was, if you sent your partner and if you sent your, you went in, I would like to hear that all.